So yeah, so obviously for the New Yorker, normally you do at most one cartoon a week that appears in the magazine. Um, but they have a new thing online where they do the daily cartoon, where they ask their artists to sort of rotate through and do a cartoon Monday through Friday. So I got tapped for that right around the inauguration. Um, so that was a little bit of a dive headfirst into the pool. Um, so it was a big, big change of pace, a little bit of a sort of a crash course in political cartooning, because normally the New Yorker obviously does more sort of personal, introspective, yuppie-ish cartoons about people sitting around their living rooms. Um, <laughs> but with the Daily, you got to go a little more into the political realm. So we're about to witness uh, kind of like how I learned how to become a political cartoonist in a month. Um, so this one was for MLK Day. The arc of the moral universe is long, but it bends toward just us. That's how that felt. We mapped out the Trump motorcade route to the White House. The editors nixed my original idea for this, which was KKK. That also works, I think. You still have to be a little bit genteel in The New Yorker, so I'm not able to go as, as harsh as some editorial cartoons. Hold on, that's a trash fire. Over there is Trump's inauguration speech. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite is the guy right there, like, speak up, I can't understand what you're... <laughs> oh, so this is what a Bible looks like. <laughs> yeah, but apparently he won the religious vote, right? I don't know how that happened. <laughs> My father would be proud. He taught me everything I know about unjustly denying housing to black people. <laughs> I'm terrific at estimating crowd size. It looks like a dozen, maybe two dozen women at most. So that's a little bit. That's a little bit what you try and do in cartoons. You know, you conflate two different ideas. Him being so jealous about his penis, I mean, crowd size at the <laughs> inauguration, and then the women's march that immediately followed. So you jam those two things together, and make a cartoon out of it. I got contacted. Actually, I was searching online, going through images of the different signs that people used for inspiration, and all those. If you look closely enough, those are all signs that I actually borrowed from people who actually attended the march and. I mean, the creativity of the people who attend protests and the resistance kind of far outstrips what anything that we can come up with. And it's actually quite humbling when you see the spontaneous acts of creativity and resistance that are going on. And I got con I, the one on the far right was one that I used. And the father of the little girl who was holding the sign on the shoulders of the parent um, reached out to me by email and he said, was this, I saw this cartoon online. Did you borrow this from us? And I wrote back and said yes and sent them a free print of the cartoon. Cool. So, yeah. So, luckily he didn't sue me. <laughs> Bright Bart News. <laughs> this just in alternative facts are not facts, they're lies. I'm a delinquent 10 year old, and even I know that. <laughs> that was the first thing I thought, Bright. I, I didn't know what Bright Bart News was before this whole election happened. I, I thought that's Bright Bart News. That's just strange. Makes sense. Voter fraud is a total myth, but there is evidence that people voted for a total fraud. <laughs> His hands are shrinking over the course of the cartoons. I kept making them smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. He is an, he's kind of an exhausting person to draw. I mean, you, you have to kind of scale him down a little bit because you see these images, you look for inspiration images of his head tilted at a certain angle, and he's so garish and so cartoonish that when you do characters of him, you almost have to restrain it in some weird way. But I think that's almost where the humor comes from, because the things that he does are so beyond the pale, not normal, outlandish, that if you, if you bring them down to earth, then the true horror of what he's trying to say comes through a little bit more clearly. Um, I'll take it from here. <laughs> that's good. And also using color was helpful. Usually in the New Yorker, you're not allowed to use color in the cartoons on the page, but in online, they allow you to do that. And so I was playing around with emphasizing certain portions of the image using color, which was liberating. But yeah, I started drawing the hollow eyes too on Trump because it's more and more clear there's just nothing, there's just nothing going on there. 
you're accidentally debriefing a bowl of mushy oranges and dead canaries. <laughs> so playing on the color theme. <laughs> the most unbelievable part of this is that he would be attending a briefing, right? That's, that's the least plausible element of this. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm tweeting that climate change is fake. <laughs> Classic desert, desert Island riff. <laughs> He's trying to tweet it away and Pence is trying to pray it away. <laughs> she was warned, nevertheless she persisted. I had another cartoon queued up for that one, but you know, I'm listening to the radio as I'm drawing the cartoon starting in the morning and sometimes something in the news cycle will happen that causes you to scrap what you're working on and do something else at the last minute. And so this is what I did in response to. Elizabeth Warren getting reprimanded for reading a letter from Credit Scott King, for all of all things. It's time we have a little chat. <laughs> <laughs> that's where it's headed, right? I mean, that's got to be where it's headed. And this was, a, this was around the time that it was reported that he sort of wanders around the White House in his bathrobe yeah. at night. So you do get hate mail, indeed. This is a hate email that I got from Omaha Gill. I see your Trump cartoons every day. You're an incredibly stupid motherfucking cunt. Obviously, the great Donald has you completely triggered. Go die painfully in a corner somewhere. Hope we all hear you screaming as you go. That's just run of the mill, run of the mill. Yeah, exactly. We're rounding up all undocumented foreign transplants that conceal evil plots against our country. <laughs> in the restroom. All genders restroom, flipping him off. I did a riff on this one that I made available for free on my website, which is that sign, and it says, haters can hold it. <laughs> it's, it's, it's learning to appear vaguely presidential. This is the night of the uh, address of the joint sessions of Congress. And it was scary that, you know, the media was all reporting that finally he became the president that night and all that kind of garbage. And so, yeah, this is my book that's coming out, Tiny Hands. <laughs> so, go ahead, yeah. I've never, I've never had a book out before, so I don't know how to casually segue into promoting it. Um, but there's my information, so go ahead and follow me, buy it if you want. Thank you very much. <laughs>